In this video, I want to talk about return types of these API endpoints. You can see that currently we're returning string for every endpoint or every action method. Of course, actual endpoints will return actual data. For example, a scat shirt by ID will have to return a shirt. But should we just return a shirt or should we use a different return type? In order to find out, let's actually define a list of shirts first. So I have something in my clipboard. I'm just going to paste it here. You can see that I have a list of shirts. There are four of them from ID one to ID four. So currently everything is in memory. Eventually we're going to use repository pattern. We're going to retrieve the data from database. But for now, while we're learning everything about web API, we're using a in-memory list. To implement this endpoint, we just need to get the shirt from this list. Okay, so let's delete this, try to implement the endpoint with this in-memory list. So we can use link. So we can do shirt ID equals ID, and then we can return this. Okay, and we need to change this return type to shirt. And let's watch what's going to happen. Let's run the application and let's bring Postman here. I have ID number nine. Of course, it's, it doesn't exist. So let's change something that exists first. Number two, I click on send. I get a shirt in JSON format, which is excellent. Right. So what if I enter something like I just did? It's number nine. What do I get? Now you can see that I have a HTTP 500 internal server error. So for anything that is unhandled, this is a generic error. And then you see this stack and it's not very user friendly, although it's very good for troubleshooting, right? But for end user, which is a application that calls our web API, it shouldn't actually see this. What do we have to do here? Uh, we can use link, we'll use first or default to actually look for the shirt first. And then if the shirt is null, then we need to actually return a HTTP 404, not found. So we actually have a convenience method. This is called a convenience method. And you can see that this convenient method actually creates a not found result that produces a 404 not found status code, an HTTP status code. But if we do this, uh, you can see that it complains that this return type doesn't correspond to the return type of this action method. If we actually found a shirt, we should return the shirt. Ideally, we should specify the status code at the same time. And we have another convenience method in SP.NET Core, which is OK. You can see that this OK creates a OK result object that produces a empty status code 200 OK. And we can put a shirt in it. So this way it returns a shirt as well as a HTTP 200 status code. So that means this return type cannot be shirt. In a action method that returns multiple types, we should use the I action result interface. This is a interface that you should use when your action method return different types of data. In this case, you can see the compiler stops complaining and we can give it a try. Okay. So with the same ID, number nine, which doesn't exist, I click on send again. Now I can see a better error message. We can see the status code is 404 not found. And it's also showing here, title is not found. So this is a user-friendly error message. What if I put something that exists? I still get the JSON object back. So that's a correct way to do it. So instead of using shirt, the actual class we can use the I action result. And another scenario is what if user enters a ID that is less than one, less or equal to zero, then we should return a different status code. So in this case, we're going to say bad request. This is another convenience method that creates a bad request result that produces this status 400 bad request. And in this case, if we test again, you can see that if we put minus one, we get status 400 bad request. And we put 
zero. We also get by request. We put four. We return a correct shirt back. And we put five. HTTP 404 not found. So you can see that everything is correct. So that's what I want to cover in this video. Typically in ASP.NET Core, you want to use iAction result as the return type, which will make everything simple and consistent. Basically, you can put iAction result in every single case. And then, of course, here, if you want to return just a string, you can just use OK. And same thing with, with this. OK, now I have changed everything to return I action result. So when we use action result, it simplifies the development process. Everything is consistent. And we are doing unit testing. I action result is consistent. So our unit tests can be easier. It doesn't have to target different re return types. So there's so many different benefits of using I action result as the return type. And that's what I want to cover in this video. I'll see you in the next one.